Hey guys, what is up? It is Dominic, and in this video, we're going to be covering opportunities inside of high level, of course. So yeah, maybe not the most exciting video, but I know a lot of you guys are getting into the opportunities tab. I really do think the opportunities tab is something that's overlooked in high level. One of those seemingly more advanced features that people will be using in their social media marketing agencies and their SaaS agencies. But what I actually found out over time was there are a lot of good use cases for opportunities way beyond just setting up like appointment leads for clients or, you know, closed bookings or things like that. In my opinion, I think opportunities work best when you're using them to manage your money, how much a lead is worth and how much you're going to make on that lead when you close them. And then of course your conversion rate over here in the far right so you can see how you're doing. Now, yes, I know there are so many other ways to use opportunities, but I wanna give you guys the basics. I know a ton of you guys watching this are beginners. You just wanna know exactly what opportunities are and how to maybe build your first one. And if you're brand new to the channel and you don't know who I am, my name is Dominic Baptist. I am the number one affiliate in the entire world for high level, the greatest software on the planet that allows you to white label it and repackage and resell any of the features that you want for any monthly recurring price point that you want so you can constantly keep building up your monthly recurring revenue and live a good sustainable life with an awesome business model on a relatively low amount of clients. So if you want to learn more about that, please check out the other videos on my channel or check out my free course in the description below. And of course, stick around to the end to see all the extra bonus stuff that you'll get while being my affiliate. But for now, let's cover opportunities. So first things first, an opportunity is built upon a contact. You have to have a contact in order to build an opportunity. So for instance, if my lead was John Smith, then my opportunity would be built within John Smith's contact. So for instance, if we head on over to the opportunities tab right down here, and as you can see, this is what a fully loaded opportunities page will look like when you have lots of opportunities in different stages of the pipeline. And we're going to cover those in a second too. But for right now, we're going to click this plus new button at the top right. And you're going to notice the first thing that it asks is a contact name. You have to have a contact in order to do this, or you're going to be creating a contact while doing it. So for this scenario, we're going to just name them John Smith. And we put in a random email and a random phone number, of course. The next options are tags and company name. If you want to add a tag for this person or if you wanna add their company name, you can do that right there. Now, tags are actually used a lot inside of opportunities because they can move them to different stages. Now, we'll really explain that when we go into automations and I show you what that actually does. But let me give you a summarized version. As you can see back here, all these little blue labels right here, these are tags. And the tags show that they're a lead in, that they're booked. You can see all the way over here, this one's sold because it's under the close stage, all of these tags are moving these opportunities into different stages. So for instance, if John Smith is a brand new lead, then his tag might be lead in or lead. And we can add that right here. But for this scenario, let's say it's real estate. Let's say we just sold John Smith a home. So the tag on John Smith's opportunity could be sold. And there it is sold. Then we can move down here. We can name the opportunity anything we want. So if we want to name it John Smith and maybe add something extra at the end, we could do that as well. But let's move move down to the important stuff, pipeline and stage. Now this is probably gonna confuse you at first, but I promise it's not that difficult. So every opportunity is built on the backbone of a pipeline. You have to have a pipeline in order to have an opportunity. So as you can see, we have multiple pipelines right here. In this specific pipeline, we made for home sales. But if we would have sold him a condo, maybe he'd be in the condo pipeline. Or if we sold him an ocean view property, he'd be over here in the ocean view homes pipeline. Now you don't have to have a bunch of different pipelines, but if that industry has so many different options, then yes, having multiple pipelines might make it a lot easier to manage all of these different things that are happening. But of course, for right now, we're just going to stick with the home. And then we move on to stages. We have multiple stages right here. We have the lead coming in. We have the lead responded. We have a list sent, schedule appointment. You can make as many stages as you want. You can make them say whatever you want. Obviously, this is all for real estate. So that's what this is going to look like. So for John Smith, remember we said we sold him already. So we're going to click the closed option. Then we're going to go down to status where we're we're going to have four different options, open, one, lost, and abandoned. And for this scenario, we want it. So we're going to click on one. Now, what is that actually going to do? What's the difference between one and open? Well, if it was open, we wouldn't have collected the money. If it was one, we have now collected the money. So whatever we put in the lead value, you will now see that money on the dashboard that we were at earlier. It will be in the one category and you will see our conversion rate move up because we won that deal. So for this lead value, let's say maybe it was like $4,000. So that was our commission on the house sold $4,000 from John Smith. And then lastly, we can assign it to someone if we have multiple users inside of the sub account. And we can even put the opportunity source. Where did we find John Smith? Was it Facebook?
Facebook ads? Did we get them on Google? Was it word of mouth? You know, whatever it was, we can put it there and that will keep our opportunities very organized so we can see which opportunities are coming from which sources. And you can scale your business easier when you know which sources are the most profitable. I would also like to point out at the top, you can book and update appointment statuses, add tasks and add notes. These are all things that I've covered multiple times on my YouTube channel, so I'm not gonna cover them, but you can do all of them inside of an opportunities tab. Then we're gonna click add at the bottom right and notice at the bottom here, it says opportunity already exists in this pipeline. So this is actually a good example of what happens when you have a duplicate opportunity. You can actually go into your settings and add duplicate opportunity. And I believe you can do this in the automation section as well. So if you wanted to have duplicate opportunities for John Smith, let's say he bought two, three or four homes and you wanted to add all of these to the same pipeline, then you need to go into settings and make sure that your duplicate opportunities is set on or you're going to get an error message that looks like this. So as you can see, I went into settings, I went into business profile, and you can see right here, we have allow duplicate contact, allow duplicate opportunity, merge Facebook contact by name, all these different options. But of course, we're going to do allow duplicate opportunity, and now we should be good to go. All right, now let's see if it works. And we're good. So I just came back into the dashboard now. You can see our conversion rate went up and we jumped from, I believe, 38,000 to about 42,595 because of that extra $4,000 that we just closed with John Smith. You can then see your little funnel right here and your stage distribution chart right here. You can even scroll to the bottom and you can see all the different lead source reports and which lead sources are bringing in the most leads and the most amount of money. Very cool, very simple to do. Just a few moving parts that you need to practice. So that of course is one way to make an opportunity. And then I'd also like to point out at the top here, you can see John Smith $4,000 and sold right here at the top right in the closed section. Now check this out. If that was too much work for you and you're like, wow, I wish I could have just made him close way easier, then watch this. So for this example, we're gonna use someone that's under contract or someone that's under the closing scheduled stage. So let's do this lead right here, the one with the last name Kempster, because as we can see, there's a $5,000 under contract, clearly not closed yet. So let's click it with our mouse and drag it all the way over to the close section and drop it. I mean, that was so easy. We didn't have to go inside the opportunity and change everything. You can literally just drag and drop into different stages. But in order to get a page that even looks like this with all these opportunities sitting here, you have to have a pipeline. You can't even create an opportunity without a pipeline. So that's why we have opportunities and pipelines right here. Let's click on pipelines and you can see we have all of these different pipelines I showed you earlier. And if you want to create a pipeline, you're going to click the create new pipeline at the top right, this will be the first thing you do when creating your first opportunity. So let's click the create button. Let's name the pipeline. We'll say test pipeline. We'll name the stages. So obviously we had five, six, seven stages in the last pipeline. For this, we're going to keep it simple. We're just going to say lead, add another stage, book appointment. Let's add one more stage and we'll say closed client. And those are our three stages in this little test pipeline that we just made. We can even turn on visibility and funnel chart and visibility and pie chart if we want to have those options right there. But for now, let's say the pipeline. And there it is right there at the bottom. I can actually go over to this section right here, click on the pipeline, go all the way down to test pipeline and boom, we have nothing here. It's brand new. We just created this pipeline. So now I can go back into the plus new and create an opportunity, which of course you now know how to do. I'd also like to point out that you can download opportunities. So if you're running this for a client or for yourself, you have a massive list going on and you want to download it and send it off to them. Or you just want to look at it yourself, send it to an accountant, whatever you're going to do, just click the little download button and it'll all go right into your computer. Now, of course, that is not the only way to create an opportunity. You can click the quick actions at the top left here, this little lightning bolt symbol. You can click that button and you can create an opportunity right here. So that is the second way, but there is another way as well. We can head on over to the contacts tab. We can click on a contact. We can scroll all the way down here to opportunities, click on opportunities, click add and create a very quick little opportunity right here for John Smith. Again, you can also do this in the conversation conversations tab. So we'll head on over to the conversations tab. We have John Smith right in our inbox. We can see his closed opportunity right here and we can create one with this button in the bottom right. So we're going to click create opportunity. And does that look familiar? It's the same thing. So those are all the different ways that you can create opportunities inside of high level. Now, what if you don't want to create an opportunity? What if you don't want to have to go in for every single lead and fill out all of this stuff? Well, you shouldn't. It's high level. The king of automation. You should be automating all of this stuff, guys. So if you want to automate this and really have it all done for you and for your clients, then you're going to head on over to the automations tab. 
So now we are inside one of the workflows. So if you've watched any of my videos before on automation, you of course know how automations work. You know how workflows work inside of high level. You have to have a trigger event. So for this scenario, our trigger event is going to be a form submitted, which is probably the most popular trigger event in all of high level. So whether it's a Facebook form submitted or a funnel form submitted, a form needs to be submitted in this scenario to create an opportunity. Because of course, if someone submits a form, they're probably going to be referred to as a lead. And as you can see right Right here, our first action when someone submits that form is an opportunity action that makes them a lead. So if I click on opportunity lead in, you can see our action was to create or update opportunity. So that is the one that you will pick. Our action name we named lead in because they're just a lead. We don't know anything about them. All they did was submit a form. So they're coming in as a lead. Remember that first stage in the page I showed you earlier? Yep, that's exactly what it is. They're a lead. And then of course, you're going to pick the pipeline. You can see way down here, we have that test pipeline that we created earlier. But for this, we're going to keep it on the home pipeline and you're going to pick the pipeline stage so if they're a brand new lead they're just going to be a lead they're not going to be responded they're not going to be list sent they're not going to be scheduled appointment or closed they're going to be a lead in you can even have the opportunity name we can put in their exact name so let's do contact field and let's do full name so now the opportunity name is going to automatically put in that contacts full name which is great and you can put in the opportunity source so for instance if this was coming from Facebook then we would make sure it is a Facebook source and you could literally copy this entire workflow and do it again for websites, do it again for Google, do it again for word of mouth, whatever you want to do and have that opportunity source right here. And then there's lead value. Now, a lot of times you're not going to know lead value automatically. You're going to have to talk to the lead, find out what their pricing is. But there are a lot of scenarios where you do know the lead value. Like maybe you're running an ad campaign for a coaching service and that coaching service only charges $5,000. Then you know that lead value is $5,000, whether you close the lead or do not close the lead. The value value of that lead is still $5,000. So you can put that right there. Not only that, we love these custom value tags because you can literally create custom values inside of the form. So if someone's filling out a form, let's say they click on a certain price that they might want to choose. They're not actually paying this price yet. They're just choosing it because they're a lead and you can have that automatically put into the lead value. There's so many different ways to automate this guys. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. So anything that you think you can do, you can most likely do. You just need to know how to do it. Then if you come down to status, we're going to, of course, have open one loss and abandon. Most of these are going to be open in the beginning. So if it is your first workflow and your first lead in opportunity or your first opportunity stage, it's probably going to be an open status, but you'll literally know that if you're making one. And then lastly, we have allow opportunity to move to any previous stage in the pipeline. So this is saying, what if the lead books an appointment, then it moved to the second stage? Do we want it to be able to ever move back? There are some scenarios where yes, that's totally fine, where they can move back in the stage of the pipeline. But for this scenario, we're not going to allow it. And then there is an allow duplicate opportunities, which I told you guys earlier, there is one inside of workflows. So we're going to click that on as well. Then we're going to save the action and the rest of the workflow is whatever you want it to be. So of course we add a tag at the end so that we know, hey, this is a lead in. And if we scroll down a little bit more, we add an email so we can email the lead. We wait two minutes, then we add a text so we can text the lead. And we just have a simple follow-up campaign. And this goes on for quite a while because we're trying to nurture the lead and we're trying to book an appointment, which is the second stage in the opportunity pipeline. So if we're ready to publish, we're of course going to publish that. And then we're going to click save and we're going to head back to the workflows. Now here's the second workflow for when that lead books an appointment. So of course our trigger event is going to be appointment status. We're gonna pick our calendar. We're gonna put the tag right there that we had earlier and we're going to put the appointment status as confirmed. So when the appointment is confirmed, the first thing we're gonna do is remove it from the workflow. So we're removing it from the previous workflow so they're not getting any more of these follow-up texts. Of course, we don't want them to have any more of these follow-up texts. They already booked an appointment. We're ready for the next stage. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to update the opportunity. So you can see create or update update opportunity, and we're moving it to the next stage, which was schedule an appointment. So as you can see, our stage right here is schedule appointment. We can do the opportunity name and source again, but we're going to keep that blank and we can do the status as well. But for right now, you get the picture. That is how you automatically move at different stages inside of pipelines without having to do them manually. Now here's a really short automation. It's for when the customer replies. So for instance, when they become a lead, let's say they reply after the fourth message. They never booked an appointment. Let's just say they replied. Well, our trigger event is going to be customer replied. The filter is going to be replied to workflow and that is going to be the workflow, the one that we made earlier. We're going to create or update an opportunity and we're gonna add them to the responded stage inside of that pipeline. Then we're gonna add a tag called responded and we're good to go.
And once you've created enough workflows that have all the different stages and updates inside of the pipeline, then you have now created a fully automated opportunities tab, which yes, maybe a little advanced for some beginners watching this, but I think it's really cool and it's good to know. Because if you're truly trying to run like a social media marketing agency model with SaaS, then yes, you will probably need to know opportunities and need to know how to do this so that your clients can see all the different stages that all the different leads that you're getting them every single week are coming through, they're effective and they're making money. Now, once again, this is not required by any means. But if you know me and you know my channel, I cover everything go high level. I want to talk about absolutely everything that high level ever comes out with. I want to cover every single feature and I have never truly covered opportunities. So this video was long overdue, but I'm glad I finally got to it. Now, yes, I could have gone way more in depth on opportunities and made a ton of more workflows. But like I said previously, I know I'm talking to a lot of beginners here. I just want to show you guys the basics, how to set up opportunities, how to set up pipelines, stages, how to automate all of those things and I highly recommend trying it out on your own agency first with yourself, with all your leads and all your clients, and then maybe using them for your own clients. And I definitely recommend trying out opportunities and pipelines and testing all these things out because the more you know inside of high level, the better off you're going to be every single time. And if you stuck with me to the end of this video and you do not have high level yet, I highly recommend choosing me as an affiliate. You're gonna get my entire setup course for free. And then of course, all my affiliates get my affiliates only course, which is going to be a full white labeled training. As you can see, there's a little training button down here. So I will make sure that all of your clients get trained by me completely white labeled. Those videos took me forever to make. You are not going to want to have to make them. So just choose me and you don't have to. And then most importantly, the number one reason why I'm the number one affiliate in the world is my ridiculous amount of support. I help every single one of my affiliates. I have responded to every single affiliate that has ever messaged me. It is incredibly easy to get in contact with me and I will make sure that you are doing well. I truly, truly, truly want all my affiliates to succeed because then I will be successful as well. And that brings me to my last point, which is I do one-on-one -on -one on boardings and one-on-one -on -one Zoom calls. So if you want to check those out, you can order them in the description below as well. 2023 is going to be the year of SaaS, the year that the SMMA model finally transforms into, well, this. And no one is more excited about it than me. So please check it out. Please give a like and a subscribe on this video. It helps me out a ton. And I will see you in the next video. Peace out.